Hello, we are live. Hi, this is Jenny Walker, and welcome to Jenny Girl's Closet. Um, this is my YouTube channel where I talk all about styling, reselling, consignment, and um, and the like. How are you? Um, just want to pop on here very quickly. It's been a little couple of days since I had a video, but rest assured, I'm not gone anywhere, <laughs> and I intend to keep putting these out. But um, I thought today I would show you a haul um, from the Goodwill that I got here recently. And what's interesting is that uh, they recently did an inventory, I think, or were having a visit. So uh, the Goodwills were all full. Every rack was full. Everything was stocked up. Um, haven't seen it this full in quite a while. And I wish the higher ups would do visits more often <laughs> because they really get on their P's and Q's, you know. Um, but it was great to have a lot to choose from. And I uh, was kind of pleasantly surprised with what I I had to actually put things back because uh, it adds up quick. <laughs> and uh, I didn't, uh, you know, don't need any inventory, uh, to be honest. I have plenty, but it's always fun to look. It's like me, it's like having a cigarette for me when I go in there and look around and see what I can find. And I got some really interesting things this time and really happy to show them to you. And I'll wait just a minute to see if anyone shows up in the chat. I will tell you that uh, the people who were checking out in front of me in the Goodwill had these amazing, the most amazing vintage, um, it was a silver bowl with uh, deer heads and giant antlers on each side that was four dollars and then they bought a set of mugs that had like this egyptian design on it i mean they were in rare form they were in rare form the stuff was the stuff was good even even if i didn't get it <laughs> that's some really cool stuff out there so yeah so it's a monday evening here in pasadena on the west coast and it was a very overcast day today kind of gloomy i was in for most of the day i did go out um uh, twice in order to deal with uh, packages that needed to be mailed, returns that needed to be sent, and uh, sales that needed to be sent out. So, yeah, I got out in the gloom, but I didn't. But I really was at home today because I um, Monday is one of my day offs, and so when I'm at home, then I'm doing home stuff. So, doing all my reselling and uh, styling things. So, yeah. Um, so I'm going to get going. Uh, this was uh, These are some things that I got at the Goodwill uh, here in Pasadena. And then uh, one thing from out of the closet in Pasadena. I forgot about that. And I'll start with that item. And uh, I sell a lot of hats for men and women. I just sold a men's hat recently that I'd gotten at the bin. So when I saw a really, really cool hat at out of the closet, I had to take a closer look. And um, I try to get the ones that have some sort of brand in them that are 100% wool. And if they don't have a brand, then it's got to be kind of a classic style. So this one um, is a men's hat. Let me go kind of back here. This, uh, it's called Don. The brand is Don, D-O-N. It's in France. Uh, it's in Paris, France. And I looked it up. And, um, yeah, it's 100% wool. And you can see on the inside, it says Dawn. And um, there you go. And this was um, $5 and 10% off. So that was $4.50. I'll just try it on for a minute. So yeah, this really cool men's hat will be for sale very soon. And um, I'm really surprised at the number of hats I'm selling on Poshmark. I sell them mostly on Poshmark rather than eBay. And... Um, Again, the last hat I sold was a men's hat. It was even missing a piece and it still sold. I was like, what was that about? So this one's in excellent shape. It's got the little black bow on the side. It's super cool. I mean, if I was a guy, I'd totally wear this. I don't know where I was going, but I feel like a Don. Don Juan. <laughs> but anyway, this was um, $4.50 at Out of the Closet. And it retails for $169. So I know I'll be making a nice little profit on that. And someone will be thrilled to have it and it's in a classic black color which is fantastic so let's move to the things that I got at the Goodwill store I'm, I'm gonna start with the things that aren't clothing and um but hold on Ms. Deals is there hey Jenny girl she says love the hat me too oh 
<laughs> yeah, my got a, I've um yeah, I like wearing hats. I've got a hat head for sure. And um uh it's always they're they're fun to wear and uh ooh, now I've messed it up. So um glad you like it. So uh when I was at the Goodwill, I found some things that have nothing to do with clothes that were really awesome, and I'm gonna show you kind of the things that I'm drawn to. And uh, this first thing is not for sale or anything, but it's something I'm going to use. I have to reach for it. I'm reaching. I'm reaching now. It's way out of my reach. I don't know how that happened, but there we go. Um, this is made in Denmark, and I love black and red. It's my favorite colors. There's this vintage um, box, storage box, and you can see it needs to be clean. I have not cleaned it or anything. You can see um, it's just your classic. It's really cool vintage. You can tell it's vintage by the plastic, and all you do is open it, voila, and you put all of your nails and your pins or whatever in here. And when I saw it was made in Denmark, I got really excited because that um, is so much better, and it was five ninety nine um, at the Goodwill. Yeah, I love red and black. So, and I like the size of it. So just. Whoa, this is going to be for me. <laughs> I better mind knock myself out of here if I'm not careful. Um, so this is going to be for me to use in my house. And, um, you know, I'll put um, all my, uh, you know, I mean, I have a toolbox, but it's too small. And so I just thought this would be cool. And, yeah, I bought it for me because that's cool looking. And I love vintage things and I love red and black. Now, this was. You talk about something I did not plan to find the Goodwill. So if you know the brand Alisi, um, it's made in Italy. And um, it's really, really expensive stuff for your house. A lot of it is stainless steel and chrome. Um, Alessi, I guess it's called Alessi. If we hold it up, there you go. A-L-E-S-S-I. Um, but uh, if you know Alessi, you know this is one of their iconic uh, designs. It's like a fruit bowl. You can put whatever you want in it. Uh, but obviously with being open on the side, uh, fruit something thick makes um, the most amount of sense. This was $3.99. And these are super, wow, it's like a mirror. Like, there, look, there's my other painting back there. Cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this was $3.99. And these are so expensive new. I think they're around $100. Um, maybe 89, 80 to hundred. So $4. I mean, and I was just on the Alessi site recently because I have like their teapots and I have, um, all of their stuff. So there it is. A L E S S I. Let's see if you can see it. Uh, hold on. You see that red sticker? A L E S S I. Wow. It is like a mirror for my computer. Yeah. A L E S S I A by Alessi. Um, so yeah, this is uh super cool and you can see that it's marked back here. Oh, look, I'm in a mirror. Um, yeah, super, super cool was three 99 and these things are super, super expensive. New, if you go on the Alessi site, you can find this, um, maybe they're hundred dollars, um, 80 to hundred dollars new. And I'm really shocked to see that in the Goodwill. I mean, I was just been wandering around. I've been there an hour and I just happened to go down the housewares aisle. And just there they were, just sitting there right on the top. I, I don't know how how that happened, but I knew what it was in an instant. As a matter of fact, I grabbed it, and then I said, oh, my gosh, I hope this is the real thing and not a copy. And sure enough, it was a real thing. So I was very, very excited. So on to fashion. So I was really um, editing out. I had a whole stack of things, and I kept putting things back and putting things back because I really – as we've talked about in other videos, I don't need any inventory, but I like to always go look. And so I'm um, really trying to train myself not to buy anything that isn't super special. But this is Gwen Stefani's lamb line. L-A-M-B. I don't think they make this anymore. But this is a black um, kind of mid-calf lace-up black suede boot. It's got like a leather toe, suede, and here's the famous you know, design on the back that's lamb. These were $14.99. A nice little spindly heel. They're in really good shape. And, um, you know, the, what's nice when they lace up like this is that 
um, more people can fit in it, you know, because the people's cabs are different sizes. And so the fact that there's some room there is going to mean it's going to fit more people, which is fantastic. But Gwen Stefani, she has a really good following and people still look for her things. I mean, they even sell this on the real, real. So, you know, then this is highly sought after. And I mean, I'm not sure how much I'll get for these, but you know, I'm hoping between 100 and 150. And you're paying for style, you're paying for quality. This is 100% suede with the leather sole. And you're paying for the name, obviously Gwen Stefani's um, Lamb, L-A-M-B uh, line. And um, she's got a big, big, big following. And um, it says leather's upper made in China. So don't get too excited. China, but still, they're very well made. So very, very excited about those from the Goodwill for $14.99. So um, I had about four or five pairs of shoes. I put most of them back and stayed stayed with that. Um, this one, I've had this brand once before, ALO. I found it in um, one of the Goodwills. They had like, had like a pair of workout pants and a really cool jacket. They sold so fast on Poshmark, my head almost spin. spin. So as soon as I saw this ALO, I knew, there we go again, nice cropped um, jacket, nylon with a hood, and a nice purple lining inside the hood. So the crop has got its banded sleeves, banded at the bottom, and um, inside lining is purple. Nice front zipper with silver, um, you know, silver hardware. Got um, two front pockets, does it? Does it have front pockets? Let me see. Um, I don't see any front pockets. What were these people thinking? How do you not have pockets in a jacket? They don't sell anyway, but man. So yeah, so this was really awesome because you know athletic wear isn't very expensive. So they had this priced at $4.99. $4.99 for ALO. That's pretty amazing. Um, the last one I had sold like, like $100, $115. So um, we'll see if we can get that in the same range. That would be nice if we could. Uh, but it's at least $80 to like $125 for that. Um, this next jacket is so cute. I mean, this was, um, it's really, it's hard to see something like this and not buy it. I don't know how anybody could like not buy it. But um, this is Zara. Wait until I show you how special this is. But hold on, there's got more than one side to it. So this is a pea coat. Black wool pea coat, and it's got these super super cool captain sleeves. So you've got this gold here, the blue, and then the star, and it looks a whole lot more special than I can see on this video. But wait till you see the back. And the back says "lovers," lovers on the back, and I just I just couldn't resist. So it's wool, it's double breasted, it's got embroidered on the back. Um, it's a little bit of an A-line shape with this um, captain-inspired look. I just think it's just awesome. And, uh, yeah, it's really hard to turn away something like that. It's a little bit different. I find that anything that has, um, like, embroidery on the back or any kind of special design on the back tends to just to sell well. So I'm always, you know, on the lookout for that. This is uh, super cute for summer. It's by the brand Moth. And it looks to be in pristine condition, this white um, woven knit sweater. And the armholes are quite generous. So I'm a, I don't know um, if you're going to wear a tank under this or what you're going to do, but you might just wear it as is. But this was um, $3.99. It's just a super cute rolled hem woven sweater. It's got like a, a semi-mock kind of at the neck, mock turtleneck, rolled neckline. Yeah, this we thought this was super cute, perfect for summer. And Moth is, a, I think that's one of those anthropology brands. So I know somebody will be looking for that. Now this is uh, Free People. It's hard to pass up cute Free People, and I thought this qualified. We've got this really cute green, uh, sea green sweater with blue sleeves, light blue. In the back has this really cool lace down the back and there's like three buttons down the front and then it kind of um there's no pop 
almost like an A-line shape to this. Be really cute with some white jeans and a white tank top for summer. And um, couldn't pass that up at $6.49. You know, this kind of thing, you know, free people, you know, all free people is not created equal. And I find that everything by that brand doesn't sell um, well or at all, but some of it does. So it really just depends on the piece. I think this is super cute. I think the colors are great. Um, you know, and it's wool. So I'm thinking, you know, this might sell like between like 40 and $60. We'll see. Now I don't do a ton of men's, um, but I, I do know enough to pick up Tommy Bahama when I see it. They had three Tommy Bahama shirts all by the same guy. And I, you know, I could have bought all of them. I just, I just didn't want to. So what I did was, um, you know, I picked the best looking one. So this is Tommy Bahama, the newer one, 100% silk. But the print is super cool with flowers and daisies on it. It's got like a mountain on the back. So, you know, the kind of pe the people who are wearing Tama Bahama, you know, the whole idea is what print, what is the most interesting print they can find. And so this one's really different. It's 100% silk made in China. And um, yeah. So it's a good price. You can't complain at $5.99 for a Tommy Bahama because some of those sell really well. I sold one on Poshmark. I think it sold the moment I posted it uh, for like $100, like $115, something like that. And it was a super, super special print. That's really what you're buying. So um, there was one that had all pineapples on it and then one that was just kind of average looking. So I just left it behind because I'm not trying to fill in my men's section at all. But I thought just for the good of the cause, I'll get the one and see how it does. Now, this is a really, really super cool tie. You'll notice this is the same plaid that they used in the Moschino that I had showed in earlier videos. It's all like a same. It's like the same color scheme with the green, the blue and the red. Uh, but this one is Tommy Hilfiger. So pretty much um, you're paying for the brand here, 100% silk. It was $3.99 for this tie. And um, it's just super special. And plaid always sells. I don't care what it is. If it's plaid, it sells. It's sort of like polka dots. So uh, this is in uh, pristine condition. And, and the size is right. I mean, it's not too wide. It's not too skinny. So this is very wearable. It literally looks brand new. So whoever had it probably either never wore it or wore it once. That's a nice thing. And if this is unisex, I mean, a woman or a man could wear this. And um, <laughs> we'll see what happens. So the next thing is um, a new tags item. This is American Apparel. And um, we all know that they closed all their stores down and went online only. This one I got because it was a new tags and it was a petite, a uh, classic pair, pair of their black pants. It's some sort of like stretch. It's like a microfiber material, but not exactly with the, you know, one little button there. American Apparel. There we go. And um, here's where they were, $6.99. And this is the tag. So um, probably something somebody bought when they were <laughs> going out of business and never wore it. But yeah, it's nice little pockets on the back. I don't know if you can see that because the lighting sucks. But um yeah, nice classic black pair, new with tags. Nothing wrong with these, stretch. So that's perfect um, Perfect for um, like, you know, spring, fall weather um, when it's not too hot or too cold. And then this last piece I'm going to show you is um, something really special. I like it. It's by Zara. But wait, no, I'm, it's gorgeous red wide leg pants. They're just absolutely amazing. They're flat in the front, flat in the back with a side zipper. Um, they were asking $6.99. Whoever had these, I think they were having like a yard sale or something, and they were asking $15 for these pants, but they didn't get it. Um, I think a yard sale is going to be a tough place to get $15 for a pair of Zara's because Unless you're buying them for yourself to wear, that's going to be tough. But, um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous red. They're very kind of a heavy crepe. 
heavy polyester crepe. Let's see what size these are. These are a size medium. So yeah, I mean, this is a nice classic pair of crepe pants and um, look forward to having them in my closet because I do a lot of um, black and red, as you know, and white. And that's it, you know, I didn't get too much. I like everything I got very much. So let's see what's going on in the chat. Key Lime Kisses, hey girl, how are you? We've got Misha Renee, thanks for popping in. Yeah, I was trying to go a little bit earlier so I could <laughs> get on here with the time difference. So yeah, I appreciate it. So yeah, ladies, I've just been doing my haul, my little mini haul. Um, Mondays are my days when I'm not in my consignment shop and I'm at home working on my resale business. I was here all day with my assistant who was helping me create our um, Google Docs inventory sheet of everything that I have for sale. Mm. And we are working on designer shoes. <coughs> Excuse me. And we got through most of them. Uh, but what we were doing was checking to see which items were on eBay, which items were on Poshmark, which ones needed photos. Did everything have the, the measurements correct? And then you're dealing with shoes. You're talking about the heel heel height. Um, you know, and we uh, found um, a number of errors to fix, which is thrilling. That's the whole point we're doing this. So yeah, it was really, really exciting. I will watch it on the replay. Okay. Replay. All right. <laughs> watch it on the replay. That's exciting. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things we were talking about today um, is how to scale. And I think one of the things that I'm realizing is that there's only a couple ways to scale your business. And one is you got to get organized. And two is you have to do do what you're doing squared, okay? So everybody who talks about reselling and talks about how much you can make in a month, they have something that's called sell-through rate, which is the number of units you're selling. So if you're selling um, 100 units in a month and say, let's say your average month, we'll just make this up, is $10,000, you're selling 100 units, then in order to have $20,000, you have to sell 200 units, right? Provided your units are the same price. And so the only way to, we're, you know, I'm trying to wrap my head around, the only way to scale my business is to increase the amount of inventory that I have in my business at the same sell-through rate or increase sell-through rate so I can sell more items quicker and perhaps have less, less inventory. So today we were doing a lot of talking about um, different platforms. So if it isn't selling on my eBay or my Poshmark store, where else do I want to put it? Do I want to send it to ThreadUp? Do I want to send it to Real Real? Do I want to um, put it on Craigslist? Do I want to do an Etsy? Uh, where do I want to send it? Um, do I want to take it to ThreadUp? Do I want to donate it? Do I want to buy, sell, trade it? I mean, where is, you know, it goes back to that whole idea of retail triage. You know, where do you get the most amount of money? For what it is you have to sell. And so uh, we were, you know, floating around some ideas about, well, let's say you get something in and you try 30 days or 60 days in your own eBay store or Poshmark closet. And then at that point, if it hasn't moved, perhaps that's the point at which you move it out of those stores and move it into something else. And then we were like, well, you don't want a hard and fast rule. I mean, it really just depends on what it is. But um, Oops, there's in things in the chat. Let me take a look. Um, you would be a good on a TED talk. You're good. To, oh, thank you. I actually looked. Um, I looked once at the rules of a TED talk. <laughs> um, it's really scary because you have to memorize your talk. Now, to help you memorize your talk, you can obviously have slides. You can have like a presentation that will like be triggers for you, but you have to 100% memorize it. It's a, a, a very uh, grueling screening process and it would be absolutely terrifying, but I have watched a lot of TED Talks and a lot of people do talk about the reselling space, but not necessarily about reselling. They talk about sustainability. They talk about living a leaner life. Um, you know, they talk about downsizing, but they don't talk about reselling per se. So I haven't figured out exactly how to construct a topic, 
Um, it would probably have to be sustainability and kind of feed that into how to earn a living um, through selling, like reselling sustainable clothing. I don't know, something, something like that. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm very comfortable up in front of people. As you might know, I'm a singer and a songwriter. I've done stand-up comedy. I have been on stage my entire life since I was a little girl in in the um, girls' choir and you, you name it. I was in high school plays and college plays and musicals and community theater. And, you know, I'm not, I don't have a problem in front of um, an audience. Uh, so I think speaking is like a natural, like the natural next step. But part of the reason I have my podcast on iTunes and part of the reason I'm doing this YouTube channel is to begin the process of speaking about what I know and what I do. And it's uh, one thing to, to do what you do. And it's another thing to talk about what you do <laughs> to a screen. <laughs> Hello. And um, have this whole chat thing going on. It's all very new to me. But um, I'm highly encouraged by the positive responses I've gotten so far. So, so I appreciate that. So thank you for recommending a TED Talk, Misha. <laughs> uh, if, I don't know. If I'm brave enough to do stand-up comedy, which to me is the single most bravest thing I've ever done, uh, although I know it isn't. There are braver, more braver thing, more, more brave things. More brave things, not braver. There are more brave things I've done, I know, but doing the stand-up was, was pretty terrifying. Yeah, I do have a podcast. Um, I will send you the link. It's on Apple iTunes. It's called Closet Conversations. And no, it's not about coming out of the closet. <laughs> it's about, um, well, actually, I am coming out of the closet because I'm a reseller. And um, it's all about reselling. Um, uh, we talk about, I say we, we as if me and the greater me, I guess. I talk about reselling and can have like, there's like eight or 10 podcasts on how to open up a consignment shop. I talk about thread up. Um, just Dairy Collective. So yeah, you can subscribe on iTunes and it's a lot easier for me to talk where no one's watching, to be honest, um, than to talk into this uh, YouTube right here. But uh, <laughs> I will get the link. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. I just have to open up my iTunes app. And so y'all are going to look at me, look off camera into wherever this thing is, so I can find it and I'll put it in the chat. And uh, here we go. Now let me see, this is copy link. Let me go over here to my, here we go. Edit, paste, boom. So that is the link to my podcast. And I also um, run a Facebook page where I put news articles about the industry. I don't put articles every day, but as I come across them, anything to do with um, anything to do with anything really related to reselling consignment, things like that. And I'm going to go right now and find that for you on Facebook. I'll give you that link. Um, let me find it. There it is. Jenny girl loves consignment resale and retail put that in the chat right here and then i do one more that may be of interest you guys try it again it did not like that hmm bookmark okay it does not like that link hold on let me see what i can do it does not like that link oh okay that's why all right let's try this again Real time, real time. <laughs> Hold on. This is to the Facebook page. There you go. That's the Jenny Girl Loves Consignment Resale and Retail. And then there's um, another one that focuses. It's a little bit redundant in terms of there isn't much I don't put in that one that I don't also put in this one. But this one's called um, Jenny Girl Loves Poshmark. And that has to do with um, any news articles I can find. Um, just about anything I can find on um, Poshmark, any news articles, any like videos I put here because I'm always, always learning and uh, I'm always reading. 
There you go. Facing a firing squad sounds applicable. To <laughs> you know what I learned about um, stand up is that um, when I did my debut in New York, um, I had an audience of what you call real people who bought a ticket and came. And so it was a very different audience than, say, an audience where they didn't buy a ticket and come come to attend. They only like bought a drink and it was filled with other comedians. So the best audience is the audience of people and the worst audience is the audience of comedians because there's some sort of weird thing. They're all sitting there with their arms crossed, you know, whether even if you're funny, they're not going to laugh. No matter what you say or what you do, it's really hard to get another comedian to laugh at your set. And I'm not sure why that is, but that was my experience. So I like an audience of real people. And then you can really gauge if you've got anything kind of humorous to say. But my debut um, is up on YouTube. <laughs> if you search Jenny Walker in comedy or stand up, it'll pop up. Now, it is um, rated R. So I'm just telling you in advance, <laughs> if you have any sensitive ears, do not go listen to this stand up. It is, it's pretty much PG slash NR for non-rated <laughs> slash PG 13. It's not a definite R, but like, I'm just saying, you know, a stand up, you know, so if you, if you, if you're very sensitive, do not go look for it. But if you're kind of like open to that kind of, raunchy comedy then you can find it on um youtube oh misha's gonna check it out <laughs> hello joanna how are you thanks for getting in the chat so um yeah now the other thing is when i'm not doing reselling um i am uh singing i'm working with my producer on a new song in his la studio um Hey, Joanna Parrish, how are you? Thanks for being in the chat. Um, so if you're really curious, because <laughs> y'all got nothing else to do, and you want to find my secret YouTube channel for my music under Jenny Walker, it's there. My live shows in New York, my um, New York debut, um, live, you know, different songs that I've done, uh, like one or two videos. Uh, very few videos, but um, I mean, obviously they're all videos if they're on YouTube, but um, yeah, you have the French woman, don't wear Chanel up on your, yeah, you know that funny, I, I, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, yeah, so who's buying luxury and people have different answers about who buys luxury and um, you know what they do, but you know, as this woman said in the video, if I'm, if I make 2000 euros, a month, I'm not going to go spend 5,000 euros on a Chanel handbag. So um, I thought that was a very interesting video. It's it's on my Facebook page called um, Ginny Girl Loves Consignment Resale and Retail on Facebook. And I just love what she had to say because the reality is that there are people who buy luxury that can't afford it, meaning maybe they dump it all. I mean, who's, I mean, I don't know how people get things, whether they're paying cash or dumping it on a credit card, but you know, a lot of times people will buy a luxury item, but don't have the lifestyle that supports it. If that makes any sense. So maybe you're, maybe you don't, you know, if you, if you assume wrongly, if you assume wrongly, that the only people who are buying luxury are people who are living luxurious lifestyles. I would say, no, that's not it at all. There's a lot of um, aspiration built into obtaining luxury bags. And in our store, to give you an example, we had a young girl who was graduating from high school and she wanted a Louis Vuitton handbag. And her mother says, I'm not spending $1,500 on a bag for you, but I'll buy you a used one. You know, this is going to be half the price. So I thought that was really interesting. So she was introducing her daughter to luxury without spending or I guess being quote unquote wasteful about it. And here's this young girl who's going to get a Louis, who did get a Louis Vuitton handbag. Who's just graduating from high school. And that's going to set her up for later in life to get the real one, right? Where she does pay full price for it. Um, but yeah, this video was talking about how the average French woman isn't wearing Chanel that she buys. She doesn't buy trendy clothing. She buys clothes that will last for years and years, classic shapes, classic silhouettes. They don't have large clauses. They don't have a 
uh, oh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, Sex in the City, Walk-In Closet. I mean, they don't have that. So a lot of people literally are in those like antique wardrobes that you've seen that are like this big. Um, they don't have anywhere to put it. And so, you know, the average person is not buying Chanel in Paris, according to this video. And I say according to the video because I'm not Parisian and I do not live in France at the moment. So, um, you know, it's just an interesting perspective on it. And so who's buying, you know, if you read any of the articles, and I have tons of articles posted in my Facebook page, um, you know, the, you know, the Asian uh, population is a huge, huge consumer of luxury goods in China and Japan, for example. And um, a lot of luxury brands totally focus on those marketplaces in order to get the revenues to continue to increase. Um, you know, there's different strategies. And so the most interesting strategy that I thought came out recently was how Gucci three to five years ago, maybe it was five years ago, just quit marking down their product on sale. And that was part of the, the things that they did to put luxury and scarcity and value back into their brand that had gotten sort of lazy, I guess, over the years. They got a new designer. They no longer put it in sale, just like Louis Vuitton doesn't put their things on sale. And Chanel only puts the trendy styles on sale. Right. So that was part of what they did to create an air of luxury about their product that you can't get it on sale anywhere. Uh, now, that's not true. If you go to the outlet mall, they still have um, Gucci outlets. So even with the Gucci outlets, that one change of not putting their things on sale was enough to, you know, boost the revenues off the charts. Let's see what's in the chat. Keelan kisses. Hmm, that's, that's right. It's a more economical way to introduce um, young people to luxury brands is buying consignment and resale. Absolutely. Um, Misha, I mean, vintage stuff's just, we have the most gorgeous valley half moon shaped leather bag sitting in our consignment shop right now. And it is just a stunner. Um, it's not practical. I mean, it's not an everyday bag, but if you've got somewhere special to go, I mean, this thing is is more interesting than anything out on the marketplace at the same price point. Let's see what else is going on. Luxury handbag with your Walmart jeans. All wrong. <laughs> there was somebody who was either some comedian or some rapper or somebody was talking about how, um, you know, they'll have the Louis Vuitton handbag, but they have to ride uh, the bus or public transportation. Now, in New York, that doesn't mean anything because we're all on the bus and public transportation. But I think it was just a matter of saying that, you know, they didn't have a car. They didn't have they didn't live in a, a luxury building that like they had the handbag, but nothing else that followed along with a lifestyle that, that would coincide with a bag of that type. And I mean, I think I mean, I don't know how. It'd be an interesting question to be like, who is the demographic? Like, who is it, this person that can spend $2,000 on a handbag and let's pretend pay cash for it? Like, what does that person look like? How do they live? You know, what is their life like um, that they have disposable income to do this? And so there's probably some formula out there that, that somebody has that if you make $100,000 a year, you will be able to spend X amount. Um, you know, on a Louis Vuitton handbag. I don't know what the formula is, but I'm sure there's one out there. But I, it, I'm sure it's probably a lot more than we realize that uh, some some stat statistician says, if you can afford this bag, you probably have an income of X. It probably is somewhere in the same as the fundraising stats. If you can afford to donate X amount of dollars, you must have X amount of um, income. Let's see what else is going on. Um, I think there might be a lot of fakes. There are definitely, let me tell you, I, I, I saw some fakes recently. I had a someone who came in and brought seven to 10 fake handbags into my store. And, um, you know, surprised that they weren't real. And I, <laughs> I'm i like, really? Like, let me tell you why this isn't real. Um, you know, and I... I don't pay, you know, I don't pay, I don't ask, you know, money or anything like that. We for free, we'll, we'll look at something. We're not there to authenticate it per se, but 
you know, if you're trying to consign it with me and I take one look at it and know that they're all fake, um, then, then, you know, it is a piece of information that you can then use to figure out what to do with the bags. Right. But I, and I explained, I said, they're fake. Nobody, no one's allowed to sell them. No one is allowed to sell a fake bag. So I said, your best bet is to uh, donate it or uh, use it or give it to a friend, you know, but I, I mean, I, I can't do anything with it. Let's see. I guess it just depends on what you find value in. See if we will have it backwards. Yeah. I mean, who's to say, I mean, I've spent so much money on um, luxury goods in my lifetime and I, you know, at the time it was the thing to do. Do I have regrets? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I had every dime that I ever spent on clothes, I'd be, I'd probably have $10 million. I mean, I would probably be a multimillionaire if I had all the money I ever spent on clothes and I had invested it wisely. And that's the thing that no one really, um, people do not like to talk about that subject. Um, you know, it's it's one thing to have the means to pay cash for Louis Vuitton handbag. I certainly didn't do that. I'd put on a credit card, you know, let's get real. And um, if I think about all the things that I've bought over all of the decades and all of the interest rates and, you know, years of, you know, always having consumer debt because of, you know, loving to shop. I mean, you know, my young self who had something to prove and I don't know what I was trying to prove, you know, thought that was important, but myself now decades later thinks it's all kind of stupid. And yet I still love it. Like I love beautiful things and I love luxurious handbags and I love all of that. But to, to look back and say, well, there was a trade-off, right? There was a trade-off between the acquisition of all those things um, and and what I have to show for it, you know? And if I'd have bought a stock with it, if I'd have bought real estate with that money, if I'd have just stuck it in a savings account with like 0.02 interest, <laughs> I'd still be better off than if than having not consumed it. And so it's this weird twisted irony that um you know, I could be a consumer of luxury goods for decades and then now be in the position to where I can use that knowledge to um, have a successful consignment and reselling and styling business. But I don't recommend anybody go out and buy luxury full price. The only thing, if, if I had to buy one thing, I would buy a Chanel handbag. I would buy a classic, not a trendy style that I would be able to have for years to come. And that would be it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend anybody buy luxury full price at all for any reason. It's a waste of money. Um, and there's so many other ways that you can consume luxury products that it just is illogical and doesn't make sense for people who have money to burn, who have money to throw away that they just don't care. Absolutely. You are the reason those stores exist. And I think it's fantastic, but I wouldn't, it's not a why it's not what I would call a wise decision when you look long-term over your life and what that money could mean or do for you, you know, years down the road. Um, it's, it's much like um, if you put money away in a 401k and you forget about it and then you kind of look at your state and go, oh, God, I forgot I had all that. Look, look what happened to it over all those years with compounded interest. So um, absolutely. I don't recommend anybody paying full price for luxury that doesn't have way too much money than cents. Right. But um, for people who, want to acquire the goods, who enjoy them, who want to experience them. Pre-owned luxury is the way to go. In addition to the fact that, um, I'm burning up with this jacket on, in addition to the fact that the pieces are more interesting, you know, but um, people don't really talk about the finance side. They don't, they don't want to talk about that. I don't mind talking about it because enough time has passed and I'm, I'm still learning my lesson. Um, <laughs> still learning my lesson, but uh, at least I still have some 401ks, but they would be bigger, to be honest. My 401ks would be much larger if I'd have put that money into uh, saving for retirement instead of acquiring those handbags, you know, like I did. So what are you going to do? Just be honest about it and try to learn from it. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Key Lime Kisses. Let's see. 
Um, I'm on the porch. Oh, Misha's on the porch with her pups. What kind of pups you got, Misha? I am, uh, this is an animal free zone here <laughs> in my place. Uh, I don't um, have any pets or the responsibility of the pets. I have so much more responsibility, which is this store that I have with my business partner. It's like somebody handed you an, handed me an infant and they said, here, I know you've never been a mom before, but I'm going to like hand you this infant called Walker Vide and Luxury Consignment. And you never get to set it down. <laughs> so I know what it's like to nourish and grow something, even if it's not a person. It is, it is, we should all, y'all all need a medal. That's for sure. Um, so yeah. So do y'all have any questions about anything? I am rambling on to five. Five people, <laughs> five people live right now. Oh gosh. So the jacket behind me, um, BCBG, I think I showed that in a different video and uh, super good. That, that brand is, uh, they closed all their stores, is kind of out of favor now. Not a whole lot of um, money in it unless the pieces are interesting. But the back of it's really cool. Let me see if I can hold on. So it's like um, got this braided. Can you even see this braided um, all the way down the back? It's like a tuxedo jacket. And um, when I lived in New York, I, this is pretty much a uniform of mine. Is I was always in a fitted black jacket, um, like like um, skinny pants, um, like wool gabardine, um, ankle boots. And when it was cold, it was knee high boots. If it was out at night, it was high heel ankle, high heel ankle boots or high heel um, knee high boots. And if it was in the day, it was low heel flats, ankle boots and knee high boots. So um, that was pretty much my uniform. You have a Rottweiler mix, a pity mix, a boxer mix. And a mi you like to mix it up there, Misha. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure this store is tons of work, yeah. It is. What can I say? I, you know, it's, um, yeah, I'm real proud of the store, but it is, um, a lot of work. Um, it sounds a whole lot different than it actually is to have the responsibility of a store because you don't quit thinking about it. Um, when I had a regular job and I would just, you know, clock out at five or six and I'd be like, I can just, you know, push that from my mind until the next morning. That's not how this is. Um, with a consignment shop, you are thinking about it 24 seven, just nonstop. You're answering because we sell online. So we're answering emails constantly with offers um, on eBay and things like that. So you just never really set it down. Misha's chickens. Wow. It's a regular farmhouse. Five acre ranch. My sister lives on a ranch. Yeah, I know all about that. Five acres. That's a good size. Let's see. I love the jacket. Says Ms. Deals. Well, thank you. I hope I can find a buyer for it. <laughs> we'll see if it was a good buy or not at $9.99 at the Goodwill. Yeah, I'll make money on that. I mean, it's hard not to, to make money on something that cute. I sell a lot of what I call tuxedo jackets. It's one of the styles I look for and put in my closet. So I'm real sure that'll be that'll be easy to sell. If I'm wrong, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it right every time. That's for sure. Um, as a matter of fact, today on Poshmark, I sold um, a Fendi uh, off-white wool tuxedo dress. And tuxedo style is hot right now. Dre tuxedo dresses, tuxedo jackets, pantsuits. It is um, really selling well. Oh, and I got a five-star rating today on Poshmark for these um, I sold these boots by uh, Mason, Mason um, Martin Margiela, uh, and I, they sold for 500 on Poshmark, which is great because it had to go through the authentication program. They were so funky; they had crazy screws in the heels, um, and uh, yeah, somebody bought them, and they gave me five stars. I'm so excited! Yeah, definitely look for tuxedo stuff, um, like the jacket I have behind me. Like I would totally wear these boots with them that I showed earlier, right? Like you want to know what New York style is? 
you know, you put that jacket with these red pants I showed earlier, and then you put these boots on. Or put on these black skinny pants I showed earlier by American Apparel that are brand new with tags with that jacket, and then you put these boots on. So like that's New York store. That's New York style in five seconds. You know, it's all about um, the monotone and the reason there's so much black being worn in New York is very practical reasons. Donna Karen was the designer that pretty much um, took credit for bringing so much black into New York. It's because the city is filthy, dirty. Um, and you know, you're up and down stairs, you're in and out of subways, you're on and off buses, you're on the street. And uh, with that kind of environment, you really need to um, wear something that's not going to attract too much um, dirt. And so <laughs> everybody thinks, oh, it, they're cool. They're in New York. They're wearing black. Well, it's a practical thing as well. And when I moved here from to Pasadena from New York, I think 95% of my closet was black, like everything, a different varieties of it was basically the same outfit over and over again different black jackets different black blouses different black pants leggings boots coats down jackets wool jackets cashmere jackets like turtlenecks and everything was black and then it would just go together now there was the occasional white I had a few white shirts a little pop of red in there maybe one thing that was blue and a few odd things but it was a uniform and moving to california um Needless to say, it's all sitting on a rack in the back bedroom. And I haven't worn, I think I've worn like two things since I moved here that were that were from New York. I've had to um, repurchase and buy things that are appropriate for the climate. And I wore tons. I only really wore pants in New York. I rarely wore a dress. And here I'm in dresses all the time because of the heat. Uh, just, you know, it's more practical. Parlous Precious, hello. Um, hi there. Let's see, New Yorkers sound like they're goths. They are goth, <laughs> but they're more of a modern goth. Like they would wear this jacket back here. And like I said, this boot, this is not goth. This is like more sophisticated. Um, you know, there's definitely goth people in New York if in the right part of town. Like if you go to, um, different parts of town, you'll see that, but it just not, it's not a prevalent thing. It's more of an underground thing. Your favorite red and black. I know it is my favorite. Um, just two of my favorite colors. <laughs> Always have loved that. Absolutely. My whole life I've worn, um, black, mostly black, black and white and with a little bit of red in there. Yeah. I like it a lot. You know, New York is um, a really, really interesting place. And, you know, I think about it a lot now that I'm not there and, you know, whether I want to go back there, whether I want to, you know, continue to be based in Pasadena. Um, would I ever live there again? It's hard. I mean, I don't even have an answer to that other than I do think about it. But to me, I don't think I actually have to go back to New York but I and live but I like to go back there and experience the city. It's great for sourcing. The sourcing that I did in New York is far superior than anything I've done here. Um, and the reason is you have the fashion district in New York. You have tons and tons of sample sales, warehouse sales. Um, you know, this, um, I think Gautier had a, a sample, not a sample, so Gautier, there was one that they had Gautier and Alexander McQueen and Trina Trina Turk, Allison Olivia. I mean, you know, the brands just, you know, they, they make so many of the brands there in New York or they're headquartered there. Um, even if the, the products get made overseas, they've got samples that they made here or extra inventory that nobody bought. I mean, it is a big deal and it's such a great way to get stuff. Um, Key Lime Kisses, yes, they do have Goodwill and Salvation Army in New York City. They do, and they have a lot of independent um, things as well, like the New York City Ballet, I think, had a store, the New York Opera. Um, that store was amazing, the New York City Opera uh, thrift store. It was not inexpensive. 
You want to complain about prices in Goodwill, like triple or double, double or triple the price, and then put it in the opera <laughs> thrift house, thrift, thrift shop. Um, but uh, it's um, they sell tons of stuff. Like there's they had something called Housing Works. If you don't know Housing Works, you should look that up. They're um, they're in New York, but they also have online where you can bid. Um, the key to their bidding process, though, for Housing Works, at least five years ago when I lived there, was you had to pick it up in person. So unless they're shipping now, um, you'd be limited. But Housing Works is a big one that has um, all kinds of sales and online auctions. There are also is, there's a Goodwill Bins in New York. I never went to it when I was there. I had just heard about it about five years ago, and was curious about it. And I was I was like, what? They sell things by the pound? What are you talking about? And um, I found out about it literally a month or so before I left town and I never had a chance to investigate it. And now I know what the bins are cause I've been here in LA and I can just imagining what's sitting there at the bins in New York. And so it is on my radar when I go back and visit next to definitely go to the bins and check it out for sure. I'm going to do that. Are you kidding? That would be silly not to. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Joanna, do you buy jewelry on eBay? I need to tag someone in a challenge. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure what that means. Um, I buy a lot of things on eBay to resell um, and for myself, just to have. But um, you know, a lot of people put things on auction. Auction is by far to me these days the worst way to sell anything. Um, I do much better with um, buy it now with make an offer button. But um, there's a lot of things that are underpriced and undervalued on eBay. And if you're looking there often enough, you will find it and you will find things that you can buy at a good price and resell. Absolutely. And you don't have to go anywhere. It'll be delivered right to you. So, I mean, online shopping is the, the antidote for people who don't live um, in an area that has too many um, thrift shops or, or bins experiences. Yeah, eBay is great. Um, you know, but eBay is not the only game in town anymore. And um, we've been doing an analysis at the consignment shop of all of the places we can sell. And I'm doing a comparison of all of the uh, pricing. So, for example, um, let's say, let's just say Poshmark is 20%, but then eBay is 9%. nine it can, it can be more if you're a new seller, but let's just say 9% and then 3% PayPal. So you're looking at 12% on eBay versus 20% on Poshmark. So that's 8% difference, right? Um, if you look at, say, Etsy, they have a per listing fee, uh, a fee to get your money out, I think, and then a, a fee if it's sell, like they have um, in a monthly fee. eBay, we do have a store, so we have a monthly fee on eBay. Then someone else might have, a different monthly fee, but no listing fee. And I just looked at Visteria Collective. They were the worst ones of all of them. Their fees went up to 25%. I'm <laughs> just shaking my head. Why am I going to give 25% to these people? It just doesn't make sense. Let's see. I'm doing a video tomorrow, tagging you. Mine was only $14.99. Took some time. Phone parts on eBay's. Are you serious, Joanna Parrish? You're a phone repair girl. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's terrific. Well, I think that is um, all we've got for right now. Um, uh, my haul is done. We're and um, we've talked about um, sourcing on eBay and uh, all kinds of good things iPhone repair girl. Uh, you need to fix my phone is cracked to smithereens right now. I've got to get the glass. The problem with the glass being cracked is that sometimes you'll push on it and it doesn't work. And it's like, oh yeah, I need to get my glass fixed. It's, you know, it's hundred bucks. They'll fix it, but it's still an inconvenience to do it. Um, I have a six S I think they're up to about 25 now and I'm still on a six. You know, it's paid for. This is the thing. I financed it and it's paid for. So I'm in, you know, I'm in no hurry to get another phone because there aren't enough features right now that are going to get me, you know, 
that are going to get me to, to, to get a new one right now. I just don't see the point. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate everyone you listening in the chat. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you missed the middle mini haul, if you start over from the beginning, you can see some of the things I got at the Goodwill and one really cool thing that I got at, um, hold on, I'll show you. We'll leave with my precious hat. So I got it out of the closet. It's a man's hat. Four fifty <laughs> retails for one sixty nine. Miss the brand is called Dawn and it's from France. Yeah, it's a pretty cool hat. Love it. You're going to rewatch this, yeah. I, Nike boxes. He's giving me a frowny face, man. What I do? Are you late to the party? Is that it? Or is it you want the hat? Is that what's going on? Talk to me, Nike boxes. Yep. Hat will be for sale. Hats do really well for me. I have probably sold six hats. That's like a million hats on Poshmark. Um, that's a lot of hats. That's a lot of hats going on. Yeah. Yeah, I like hats too. But um, as as they, as Meg Ryan said, most hats are a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I have hats, but I don't ever wear them. Like I, I think I am. Like to me, it's like an impulse purchase. It's like going to Paris and buying a tote bag that says Paris on it, right? You're gonna wear it in the moment and that's it. Baseball. I sold um a baseball cap the other day, a Jurassic Park from the first movie for like 20 bucks that I got at the Benz for like a quarter. And it was new with tags. And um, I'm not into that. Like, I am i don't do anything with entertainment stuff. I just know people like it and collect it. So I was thrilled when it sold for $20. I was like, really? Um, but I haven't been to the bins in, like, about a month now. And I really miss it because not that I need anything. I don't need anything. I don't need a thing at the bins. There's nothing I need at the bins. But, um it's just fascinating to be in there and um, to look through everything. Yeah, hats. Yeah, hats are definitely an impulse buy for sure. Um, you know, now the one hat that I really want to get is one of those Chanel tweed um, like caps. You know, like page boy caps. And um, I've seen them over the years, but never, never really wanted one until now. Um, I would really love one. Nike boxes. He overslept. Well, you know, Nike boxes, that's what our rewind is for. So you can go back and um, see the haul. You did get to see the hat that I just put on, but I won't um, show it again. Hey, don't sleep on the bins. Found Alexander Wang two weeks ago. You are amazing. You know, it's just I got busy is really it. Uh, favorite baseball cap is one that supports our president. Don't want to be political. I think that those are good sellers. Yeah, you know, I've heard that too. I've heard that. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, everybody's so afraid to say anything. <laughs> it sells. It sells. I mean, plus political collectibles is a big deal. So whether you're buying it as a political collector or you're buying it to wear now, political themed items sell. Um, when I, I used to work years ago for President Carter, and I have things um, from that time in my life that uh, – that I was, you know, that I bought, that I was attracted to. I mean, I have like a Jimmy Carter bottle opener. And, you know, some of this stuff is pretty, pretty hard to find. And it's pretty rare, but it's not that rare, right? Because people who are into political, like, political collectibles know exactly how rare something is. So if they're buying um, the things from the most recent um, or the current presidency, it's because they're thinking it's going to be valuable later not this isn't necessarily somebody's going to wear it out right now but they might but a lot of people are holding on to this stuff for for later when it has more value because you have to look at it as a political collectible because that's exactly what it is yep you know collectibles are you know people are into all kinds of things baseball cards like it's no different than the current players in baseball cards. You know, whoever is current now will be historic later, as we know. I'm very inspired by the Alexander Wang find. 
it was a tie and he bought it for Florence Man was expecting so much more. What was he expecting? Condition? I don't understand. Nike, tell us more, Nike boxes. Oh, well, you got a negative? It could have been um, just a prank, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you know, everything that's um, collectible, you know, collectible, um, you know, what does collectible really mean and what is truly valuable? Only time will tell what's truly valuable. Um, remember the Beanie Babies? <laughs> right. Not really valuable. You know, and um, if you would put that same money in the stock market, you'd, you'd be better off. Um, even with it having crashed and come back to life, you'd be much better off if you put that money in the stock market. Um, stated, got it. Condition. Three Alexander Wang pieces. That's amazing. I'm very hopeful hearing that Nike boxes. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been to the bins. I wanted to go yesterday. Um, the person who takes us uh, was not available, but it looks like I'm going next week. It looks like I'm going next Sunday. So I'm really excited. I haven't been on a Sunday before, so I'm a little terrified. <laughs> I'll be elbowing people out of my way. Get out of my way. I got Alexander Wang to find at the bins. Says Nike boxes. And see, I don't follow um, sports. So I see jerseys all the time when I'm outsourcing. I don't have a clue. I just walk on by because I don't, I just don't know. I mean, short of finding a, a Rolling Stone t-shirt <laughs> or Beatles memorabilia, I really, I mean, I saw like Elvis stuff um, recently in Out of the Closet, but not my thing, man. It's not my thing. So I have to walk on by. Um, this is where it'd be nice to have like a whole networking to, so that if I found something, I, somebody else who was into that, I could be like, Hey, I found this for you. You love sports stuff. Yeah. Sports is really popular. I've had a few sports things. Cause when I first started reselling, um, and, um, watching videos, cause this is the key. I've always been reselling since 2003. And even before that, before eBay, um, but I wasn't always watching reseller videos. I didn't even know it was a thing. I had no idea. And I really became introduced to reselling videos when I was about to open up my consignment shop. And I wanted to see, had anyone done any videos on consignment shops? And it was almost nothing. I mean, if you search consignment shop, you're going to get almost zero results. But if you can, if you search reselling or reseller, you're going to get a gazillion results. And, um, I was really surprised by that. And that's one of the reasons I want to do some focusing on consignment because it's a really underserved niche and tons and tons of people have brick and mortar consignment shops and think about opening them and think about buying them from other people. And they don't have a ton of resources on YouTube. So that's a space that I hope to fill. And if you go to my, um, my Apple iTunes podcast called closet conversations, which I linked above, um, I have at least 10, eight to 10 segments on how to open up a consignment shop. Um, might be interesting for some people who are into that. Let's see what else is going on in the chat. I'm wondering if anyone saw this movie that made a $1.2 billion. I did not see it. <laughs> um, but I think I, I must see it. $1.2 billion can't be wrong. <laughs> Unless it's the national deficit. Then it can be wrong. Um, but I haven't seen it. So should I go? should I go to the movie? Should I go see the Avengers? thing that's out. I don't even know the name of it. Saw it twice. It must be good if you saw it twice. So I'm taking that as a double thumbs up recommendation from Nike Box. Now my favorite of the actors of and I haven't seen the movie is of course Robert Downey Jr. I think he is pretty awesome as Iron Man. The first Iron Man was my favorite. 
the others not so much, but um, it's really exciting to see him. Uh, he's really such a talent. Uh, and his story is so wonderful how he kind of redeemed himself and came back to life as an actor because they don't all make it, you know, they don't all beat the drugs and get back to work, but he did. Go if you like superhero movies. Okay. I love, oh yeah, Robert Downey Jr. You know what's, what I like about Robert Downey Jr.? He's straight. <laughs> Nothing like a straight man playing a straight man to get a girl excited. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to build that into my stand-up comedy because I had a whole conversation about it at a party this weekend. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's one of his appeals. It's his appeal, man. Straight, straight actor playing a straight, straight hero. I mean, it's, you know, what more could a girl want? Yep. Yeah. Well, this conversation has taken a strange twist. So I'm going to end it here, guys. Um, so unless you'll have any questions, I'm going to get on the road, uh, the road to my other room. <laughs> Let's see. My husband and I have already seen our one movie for the year. <laughs> I love it. I haven't seen any movies this year yet. Did I? No, I saw um, uh, A Star is Born was the last movie I saw. And that was in November. So yeah, I haven't even seen one in 2019. You know what I've learned about movies is do not read the reviews, whatever you do, because it ruined A Star is Born for me. I have read too many reviews and I didn't get to see the movie soon enough. And I was just, I, I, my expectations were all corrupted by the time I saw the movie and I couldn't really enjoy it. So that can be a problem. Do not watch reviews. Do not listen to these people. Make your own mind up and don't let it ruin it. Because even when they try not to ruin it, they ruin it. Well, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but I'm going to tell you all about the movie anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed what you heard tonight, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure and leave a comment below and subscribe. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when I go live, which is at all kinds of different random times. I do not have a set schedule as of yet, um, but I'm I'm working to see if that's something that I can do. I doubt it, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah, and if you have any um, topics for videos you'd like for me to cover, if you comment down below, I will be able to read those. I love when people comment. People are starting to comment. <laughs> so that's really exciting that uh, people are watching and appreciating what we're doing here. Um, too hot for me. I thought it was too plain. Hmm, I hear you. Um, so, um, if you've missed the haul, if you start the video over, you can see the pieces that I bought most recently. Um, I will try to start doing what's sold videos um, that they'll, because I'm packing up every day, they'll have to be like um, before I leave to go into my store, which is around 10 Pacific time um, is when I'm going to try to do those videos. So I'll see if I can make that happen. Um, I would love to show you the dress that I sold, but uh, again, it's packed up. I didn't think about it. So anyway, thanks everybody for being here. I really appreciate your support. Um, I'm beginning to recognize the names in the chat and I just think that is so wonderful and you've really made my day and um, hopefully we can continue the conversation another time and um, y'all have a great, great Monday evening and I look forward to seeing you in the next day or two on my next video. Thanks guys. Have a wonderful night and um goodbye everyone bye from pasadena <laughs>